All right, so it's my pleasure to introduce um, our first speaker of the day. Um, his name is Hemet Mehta. He's been featured on CNN, Fox News, um, the Wall Street Journal, and served as a board member of the Foundation Beyond Belief and the Student Secular Alliance. Most of you know him from his um, popular podcast, The Friendly Atheist. And his most recent project is the, sorry, um, is the podcast The Supreme Court versus, versus Church and State Separation, whose first season um, focused on the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, with no further ado, let's welcome our first speaker, Hema Mehta. Hello, can you all hear me okay? All right. So the theme of this event is think again, and I wanna tell you about something that uh, I have thought a lot about and changed my mind about for quite some time. And here's a question for you, and I'll answer this down the road, but how many atheists are there in public office, whether at a state level or at a national level? There's not a lot, so here's another question. Should we have more? Is it worth it to have more atheists in public office? And I would argue, to some extent, maybe not. There are plenty of religious representatives who do a good job of fighting for church-state separation, generally progressive values. I'm happy to support them. But it, there is value in having atheists in public office. And part of it is just the ability to see somebody who represents what you stand for in public life. But do this for a second. Talk to each other and ask yourselves, who's the most famous atheist you can think of? Tell the person next to you what you think the answer is. Who is the most famous atheist you can think of? If it's somebody like Richard Dawkins, someone who's an author who's written books about religion, then we know their purpose. Their purpose in writing books about atheism was to convince you religion was wrong. If you're thinking of someone, a comedian, Bill Maher, somebody like that, their goal is to use religion as a tool for mockery. They want to show you that there's something wrong with religion because it'll get a laugh out of you. But I would argue that having an atheist in public life may be the most powerful way to get an atheist in the public eye whose goal isn't to promote atheism. And think about this for a second. If you are an elected official, you are in a position where your job is to cover you know, the needs of all of your constituents. You have to take care of their issues. You have to worry on their behalf and fight for them. And yet, if you are openly Muslim, if you are openly bisexual, if you're openly gay, that is a platform where your job is something, in theory, very benevolent, and yet you also have a platform for these other identities that you represent. And this is some place where we don't see enough atheists. How many of you have had this situation where you told somebody you were an atheist, and they said to you in response, oh, I thought you were a good person, right? And part of the problem with that is there, not, there are not enough people in the public eye who are there just to do good for other people. But politics is probably one of the most prominent ways we can see those people in public life. So my argument is we should see more atheists in public office. We need more candidates to be out atheists and still electable. And that's a hard sell. There was a magazine cover a while back, and I'm gonna tell you what it said on the title. It said, is atheism the last taboo? And I'm gonna read you a portion of it. It said, atheists generate about as much sympathy as pedophiles. Try to imagine an avowed atheist running successfully for public office. It's hard enough for politicians to oppose prayer in school when politicians proclaim their belief in God, regardless of their religion, they are signaling their trustworthiness and their adherence to traditional moral codes of behavior, as well as their humility. By declaring your belief, you imply that an omnipotent, omniscient, and benign force is the source of your values and ideas. When was that written? 
could have been written yesterday, it feels like. That was written in 1996, and that was the cover, is Atheism the Last Taboo in Politics, which I should say, that's a little weird to say, because in 1996, we had not had an African-American president. We didn't have a woman on the ticket. So there are other taboos out there. But the question is still true, because it seems like we never see any open atheists in government. Um, a, that changed, finally, in 2007. And in 2007, one of California's own, Pete Stark, decided he would come out as non-religious. He said, I'm a Unitarian, but I don't believe in a higher power. And that was amazing, partly because we had never seen someone in Congress, at least in modern times, come out and say, I don't believe in this stuff. And the amazing thing was, he had been so in Congress for such a long time, and people in his district knew him so well that it was a non-issue for most people. Pete Stark later said the responses he got were overwhelmingly positive. People appreciated that he was willing to say that out loud. He got very little pushback in any sort of negative way, which is amazing. He lost a re-election bid in 2012. It had nothing to do with this. But think about this. In 2012, when he lost his election, we were down to zero open atheists in government. There are 535, 538 members of Congress. Zero of them openly say they believe in God in 2012. But I got excited because there was a woman from Arizona who had just gotten elected to Congress and I heard rumors she was openly non-religious. Her name was Kirsten Cinema, And when she won the primary in her state, she started backing off from any insinuation she was non-religious. And when she won, I saw a lot of headlines that said, uh, she's openly bisexual and she's in Congress, and how cool is that? And I'm like, wait a minute, I thought she was also an atheist, and they don't make any mention of that anywhere. I literally wrote to her campaign people and said, hey, can you just answer this for me? How does she identify when it comes to religion? And I'm gonna read you exactly what they wrote back to me. Atheism is, quote, not befitting of her life's work or personal character. Like you could have just said, no, we're not gonna answer your question. No, they had to throw us under the bus. But when she took her oath of office with John Boehner, she was sworn in on a law book. Like she didn't swear in on a Bible, she swore in on a book that had meaning to her as an elected official. Last year she ran for Senate. She won her race against Martha McSally. When she got sworn in by Mike Pence, she was sworn in on another copy of the Constitution, Arizona and, ooh, Arizona and the US Constitution. She is the only member of Congress who says officially on the record, she's unaffiliated. Like, she'll answer your question, but she's not really going to answer your question. So every two years, the Pew Research Center puts out this list and they say, we just now have a new Congress. It's the beginning of the new legislative term. Let's just look at everybody's stated religion. And there are about 18 members of Congress who say, I'm not going to answer your question for personal reasons or political reasons. They just refuse to answer. That's fine. They don't count. Most of them are Christian, some form or another. One person, Kirsten Cinema, is unaffiliated, and that's it. There is still this taboo of saying you're an open atheist. I thought that might change uh, with Barney Frank. Barney Frank, very progressive, very outspoken. He left, he retired, and after he retired around 2012, he said on TV, he joked about being an atheist. Then when his memoir came out a couple years later, he said, people think I'm an atheist. I'm not an atheist, I'm Jewish. And he, oh, he, what he said is, I wanna make sure I don't disassociate myself from that word because I don't want anyone to perceive me being anti-Semitic. And he still has ties to the Jewish community. He's kind of like a secular Jew. Even he's not an atheist. If one of the most outspoken progressive Congress members can't say he's an atheist, seems like we have a problem, um, but, some of this started to change recently. So in 2017, a member of Congress openly said, I don't believe in God, I'm a humanist, 
And I'm going to put that out there. And that was Jared Huffman, who's not far from here either, another congressman. So finally, we had one person willing to say he's not religious. And yet, when the Pew Research Center in 2019 put out their list of religions, there was one person listed as unaffiliated, Kirsten Cinema, and nobody listed as non-religious. And they wrote in their mess, they wrote in their report, we know what Representative Huffman said, he did not reply to our survey, he hasn't said this on the official record, so we can't count him. He finally changed that earlier this year. So now he's on the record as being a humanist. But the point still remains, it seems really hard for even progressive representatives in safe districts to come out as atheists. It seems like there is a point that there is this taboo. But here's the optimistic thing about all this. This is all starting to change. In 2018, I started tracking every state level representative running for state house or state senate. And with the help of the American Humanist Association, they all got questionnaires that asked, you know, are you willing to say on the record if you are non-religious? Because most of the time, most of them don't talk about religion on the campaign trail. And, and the national press is not paying attention to their races. And guess how many of them who eventually won their races, how many state level representatives do you think are openly non-religious? I thought maybe at best we would see five six, something like that, and they wouldn't even all use the word atheist, it's 50, five zero state level representatives or senators who are openly saying they're non-religious. Way more than I ever anticipated. And they did this publicly, like they were willing to say, yeah, yeah, you can put my name out there, you could say I'm an atheist, because, and this is key, they all said, I'm not running on that, I'm running because I care about these local issues, so they didn't think it would hurt them. And the fact is, there were hundreds of candidates who were on the ballot, many of whom lost their races, because it's hard to run a race when you've never done it before, who were also willing to say they were non-religious. But 50 of them won. And that was 2018. Can you imagine what that number is gonna be in 2020? when there's probably an even greater progressive wave. So that is a big deal, that is changing. And I'm gonna leave you, um, uh, here's the upside when there are 50. When there are so many candidates like that, I literally remember seeing a piece, a piece of legislation, I believe this was in New Hampshire, and it was a pretty pro-science bill. And I remember seeing the representative who sponsored that bill, and I, saw, and I thought to myself, I remember that name. She's one of the non-religious state representatives that I was keeping track of. So that's kind of cool. You have a non-religious representative pushing this secular pro-science bill. That's great. Then you look at her list of co-sponsors, and it was practically everyone else in her state who was also openly non-religious. And I thought, wow, like she got all six or seven of them in her state to join her on this bill. That's pretty impressive. I get a message from her later on, like a private email that says, where do you think I got the names on that list? I looked at your list of who was non-religious and I thought, oh, those people are gonna support this bill that I'm working on. So she knew she had co-sponsors who would help her out. I had another state representative message me privately as well and said, how come I'm not on your list of atheist state representatives? I'm like, cause I don't know who you are, who are you? She said, I'm an atheist. I'm like, are you public with this? She said, yeah, look at my Twitter feed. I swear, every other tweet, I have no problem with people knowing I'm an atheist. They know I'm outspoken in every other way. So great, add her to the list. But the point is, there are a lot of people in certain parts of the country who realize that being openly non-religious is not a liability, and they're willing to say that out loud. Last month, the Democratic National Committee finally realized this is a changing trend. They actually passed a resolution, like the National Democratic National Committee passed a resolution that honors the religiously unaffiliated. And I'm gonna, what they said on there 
is basically we appreciate the value that non-religious voters bring to the table. We want to hear their voice. We want to fight for church-state separation and their progressive values. Like, all it was was a, hey, we see you, we appreciate you. It was not a controversial resolution, and yet the backlash from, like, right-wing media was huge. The response was like, oh, look, Democrats are now getting in bed with atheists. This is bad news for the country. But let me paraphrase something Pete Buttigieg has said on the campaign trail many times over, and it's basically this. Conservatives who don't appreciate non-religiosity, they are going to trash progressives as being godless no matter what they do. So why not just be open about it and say, this is who we are, this is what we support. Like, it's not, it's not asking much saying, hey, we appreciate the value that non-religious people bring to the table. Let me leave you with a few points of interest here. Um, four pieces of advice for anybody here. One is, what can we learn from all this? And I think one answer is this. If you are ever running for office, and you should, wherever you're from, especially if you're younger and you have like a career in front of you, don't let your atheism define you if you're running for office. And here's an example of that. A couple years ago, I saw this woman running for uh, the Nebraska legislature. They're the weird one with like one house, one Senate rather, and that's it. Everybody's a senator, that's all they got. She was running for a seat in the state Senate and there was a little profile in a local newspaper saying, this woman, Megan Hunt, is running against this other uh, candidate. And they just did little profiles on them. And it said in the little sidebar in the article, religion. And it said, under Megan Hunt, religion, atheist. Like, she just put it out there. I've never seen that before. And part of me was screaming, like, why did you say that out loud? You're trying to get elected. You don't want to say that out loud. And then she got elected. And she, what she told me later is she said, every time she speaks to voters, every time, even now, in the state Senate, when she's writing legislation, she's working on the issues that matter to her constituents. She's working on local issues. She put out the fact that she's an atheist because it's a non-issue for her. It's not what people should be voting for her as a reason for it. Like, it, it shouldn't be an issue. So she put it out there, and now they can't use that against her because she has a record to work off of. So this is huge. Anyone who's running for office should recognize, hey, I'm glad you're running if you're an atheist. I hope you're open about it. But then stop talking about it because you are in public office not to advance atheism, but it would be nice to see atheists advancing progressive values in general. Here's another one. Um, and this is not a partisan thing, I'm just pointing this out, we are virtually non-existent in the Republican Party. That's a fact. All 50 of those people I mentioned who are state-level representatives and openly atheists, not a single one is affiliated with the GOP. I found one guy, and this is last year, I remember reading a letter to the editor in a local paper, and it, someone was saying, we gotta fight for church-state separation, our founding fathers wanted this separation between church and state, and I looked at the person who wrote it, and it was a Republican state representative, um, I believe from New Hampshire. And I remember writing to him and saying, wait, are, are you an atheist? Because that's what it sounds like. He writes back to me, yes. I'm like, do people know this about you? He said, yeah, I mean, everyone who's close to me knows this is how I feel. I'm like, I, no one else seems to know this. And so he was willing to come out as the only Republican atheist in elected office anywhere that I could find. And then within about two months, he said, he made a public announcement, I can no longer affiliate with the GOP. I'm going to become an independent. I'm now affiliated with the Libertarian Party. Came out, changed affiliation. We're back to zero Republicans. He had his reelection in 2018. He lost by a landslide. I think because he was a third party candidate running against the two major parties, but we're down to zero. I'm just putting that out there. You make your own conclusions from that. The third, this is huge. As a group, non-religious Americans do not vote like we need to. We are roughly 30 to 40% of the American population. 
We are about 12% of the voting population. And you can bet that white evangelical Christians, they punch up in that regard. They are becoming a smaller and smaller percentage of the public, and yet they vote like there's nothing else that matters to them. And they have power because of that. So any of you who are affiliated with any group, because I know you can't do partisan politics, but what you can do is push for voter registration drives. You can make sure everyone in your community, everyone who's part of your groups, is working to get people voting. That is a huge difference between our demographic and a, the evangelical demographic, because our numbers are roughly the same in the American population, and yet they outvote us every time. And the last thing I'll leave you with is this. Even if you have no interest in running for office or playing politics, one thing all of you can do, especially if you don't live in California, is you are gonna have candidates, whether it's for national office or for local office, they are gonna come to your communities. They will hold town hall meetings. They will try to get your vote, and most people just ignore it. They don't show up. I am asking you, you should show up, and it doesn't matter if you like the candidate or not. Go to their meetings, ask them questions, and get them on the record about church-state separation, what they think about atheists, all those types of things that might have an impact on our community. And the reason is this, sometimes you get exactly the answer you might expect, sometimes you don't. But I remember a couple of years ago in 2016 when the Iowa primaries were, uh, the caucuses were about to happen. Obviously, Iowa caucuses, you have every presidential candidate coming through every part of the state. And there was an activist there uh, named Justin who would go, he's, um, I believe, a Democrat, but he would go to every Republican's meeting that came through his community. So you would have instances where he would show up to a Ted Cruz meeting with his camera in hand and say, Ted Cruz, I represent atheists. Why should any of us vote for you? That is a good question. His answer was kind of what you would expect it to be, but it's on camera. That sort of thing, we don't get a lot of politicians talking about what they're gonna do for church-state separation or how they're gonna help or what they're gonna do for people who are not religious. They love pandering to religious voters, people of both parties. They love pandering to religious voters. They never talk about us. They should, but they're not gonna do it unless you ask them questions about it and you get them on the record saying that stuff. So consider asking those questions. I am telling you, I have seen this change happening, especially at the state level, and it's going to continue, no doubt about it, but this is how you can help make that happen even faster. So thank you so much.